uh, mind, you, um, you, you, everything becomes easier. Conversions come easier. Mike, all you have to do is use the same one as before um, to jump on the live session. So to this week, going from audiences, now we're going to be talking about funnels. Uh, we're making this a process, so next, uh, on Thursday this week, when we start building out our campaign inside Facebook, we have everything structured the right way. So the first thing that you want to get into when, when you're dealing with your sales funnel is your, your hook. Now, what what is your hook? Your hook is your lead magnet. It's basically your funnel's unique selling point because what no matter where this person your visitors coming from whether they're coming from Facebook whether they're coming from YouTube whether they're coming from Google no matter where they're coming from there has to be something that speaks to them right something that speaks to them that attracts their eyeballs and their attention that then they come through and hit your web page, whatever it is, if it's a capture page, if it's a video, we'll get into more uh, details of, of landing pages that you can put people into first. But right now, just want you to fully grasp the importance of your hook and the importance of your lead magnet, because this is where we see a lot of people fall short and they think that all they need to focus on is the traffic and then once they have the traffic everything's going to be okay and money will just start rolling in when really that's wrong uh the sales funnel the lead magnet and your message that's what you have to spend the most time on because you can honestly go out and traffic is a commodity you can go out and find people and pay 60 cents 70 cents 80 cents i mean a click Right, without having to do anything, you just give them money and they'll send you traffic. And if you've done uh, these steps that we're going through today right, you're going to generate sales, you're going to generate a business and, and have a scalable, sustainable business. Uh, what you're learning through this course is how you don't have to go to those traffic brokers, you can develop your own 25 cents, 30 cents, 40 cents click traffic business. And then because we're going through, because this course is mass audience conversions, it's not just Facebook conversions, then you're you're going to see how to lay your funnel out so when someone hits that funnel, they're more inclined to buy. So a lead magnet is a noun, an irresistible bribe offering a specific chunk of value to a prospect in exchange for their contact information. The goal of the lead magnet is to maximize the number of targeted leads you're getting for an offer. So basically, there's many variations of uh, uh, a lead magnet, and we're going to be diving through those here today. The key to your lead magnet is specificity, because if you have a lead magnet that is giving 10 different marketing methods or uh, you're talking about three main subjects, so you're teaching people on a concept of three main things. You're going to lose that person's focus. Now, there's great news for you here. Lead magnets don't have to be lengthy or even complex or time intensive to create. In fact, a long and complex lead magnet will likely convert poorly. You simply need to solve a specific problem with a specific solution for a specific segment of your market, right? Remember last week we were talking about target marketing and identifying a group of people that have an issue that you can solve with your product or service and then inside of that target audience, really drilling down to find the most specific targeted group of people that your product or service solves their issue so once you know that knowledge once you know that problem then your lead magnet is a simple quick and easy solution for them to solve a specific problem uh, and if you want further ideas and where a lot of this content came from it's from Ryan Dicey's blog, digitalmarketer.com forward slash lead dash magnet dash ideas dash funnel. And I'll put that inside of the um, 
inside of the Facebook group for everybody also. Are you on, Emily? Everybody's kosher, can hear and see and following along. That's good. If so, if not, just post in that, that thread there. I'm looking at it on my phone, so I'll be able to jump. I'll be able to see you even though we're in here. So here's a demonstration of a very specific, very high converting uh, lead magnet offer. Grow, grow enough food to feed a family of four in just four square feet of space, even if you don't have a yard. How specific is that? Rather than them saying, learn how to grow enough food to feed a family of four, or left it there, or look, grow, uh, learn how to grow food uh, in a small space, or learn how to grow food even if you don't have a yard. Those three demonstrations I just gave are, again, surface level stuff, where you want to get down into the, the, the deep, roots and you want to get really specific so that's why they remember he's uh ryan dice was talking about you want to have a specific solution solving a specific issue for a specific target or demograph of your target audience so this is doing exactly that it's speaking directly to so they have a target audience of people who want to grow their own food organically then they have a target audience within that target audience of people that don't have a lot of space to do it or maybe have a family that they want to do or grow for and then inside that target audience there's another demographic of people person who doesn't have a yard maybe they live in a uh, a housing estate maybe they live in apartments or maybe they just don't have a yard with their house so what they've done is they've gone to the surface level of their target audience right and then they've gone even deeper to their level of their target audience and then they've went deep within their target audience to be very 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 specific so if this was a banner ad or a ppc ad and they were targeting uh, families of four who live in uh, built up areas who don't have a yard but are, want to live green and they saw this ad and came and saw this capture page do you think they're going to be opting in absolutely because they're speaking directly to that person rather than a opt-in lead magnet that looks like this uh, and it's not just the look it's the fact that this takes 20 weeks to consume so <laughs> in this day and age let me just tell you a funny little interesting fact in the 1930s the average attention span of a human being was just under 30 minutes because the distractions that you had were maybe once a day, max twice a day, someone would come to your front door if you were busy. Uh, maybe once a day, maybe once every two days, your phone would ring, maybe if you had a phone back then. Uh, you would maybe get a letter. So the distractions that people were getting were very few and far between. Now, fast forward to 2015 with our iPhones, with all these gadgets, with our iPads and everything, we are on our phones so much and distractions happen by the minute, by the second. The attention span that we have of a person in 2015 is nine seconds. So we've gone from in 80 years, 85 years or so, we have gone from having an attention span of 30 minutes all the way down to have an attention span of nine seconds. So if you're telling someone it's going to take 20 weeks, which is, uh, what's 20 weeks? Four, four weeks in a month, like almost a third of the year, I think. Terrible at math. Just under 52 weeks in a year, right? So it's going to take them that long to consume this thing, well, frick that, I'm not gonna wait around that long. That's where it's gotta be like a, a, simple set, a simple seven steps or a daily plan of action or something that can be consumed right away. So if you had a, let's just say for example, you had a, a Facebook course showing your 13 top strategies for generating leads on Facebook, your lead magnet 
wouldn't necessarily dive into all of the 13. You would pick one or two of the best, and then that would be your lead magnet offer on the front end. So you're leading in with something simple, something specific for that person to digest. You guys getting me? You still excited? It's pretty awesome stuff, right? Sweet. We're flowing. We're in the mojo. We're getting it. That's awesome. It's pretty exciting, right? So the nine types of lead magnets, because not every lead magnet is created equally, for especially for different markets. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So the first type of lead magnet we're talking about is really most popular, and that's reports slash guides. Reports and guides are amongst the most common that we see every single day, really no matter what market you're in when it comes to lead magnets. If you use a lead magnet of this type, you've got to be very careful because we could easily violate the number one rule in Fight Club, the number one rule in lead magnets, right? And that's specificity rule. Because at the end of the day, if you're not being specific and you're not giving someone a clear cut uh, objective of how they can solve their issue and it's kind of all over the place, then they are, uh, they're kind of getting, they're getting a little sidetracked. They're not staying focused in what they're doing, and uh, it just takes too long to to consume. So making sure that your guide or your report is very very specialized specific knowledge. The number two, cheat sheets handouts. Cheat sheets are my favorite. I even if I have a report on something or a guide on how to do something, I will nine times out of 10 try and frame it into a cheat sheet because people love to get the upper hand. We love to get a shortcut. We love to leave the masses behind while we go and find that little backdoor entrance into the promised land. Uh, cheat sheets and handouts work really well because then we feel like we're getting a lot of value. If you spend a few hours drawing up an awesome cheat sheet that someone could genuinely, when they opt in, they could hit a button and download that and print it out and end up with three or five or ten pages of pure content, of pure gold. How do you think that person's mindset is towards you and your business next time you ask them to buy something, next time you ask them to opt in, next time you ask them to take an action? How do you think they're going to feel when they've already been blown away? They're going to feel great, right? Yeah, you're seeing this, right? Uh, they, they do have a different feel from reports and guides because reports and guides are kind of, uh, I, I always imagine it like the view of what it is that you're trying to teach. It's just commenting on it where a cheat sheet or a handout is actually uh, do this in step one, boom, do this in step two, boom. It's actually a laid out uh, step by step guide giving or showing someone or directing someone an exact way on how to do things where a guide or report is kind of just commenting and showing the overview of it. A cheat sheet or a handout is actually going into the specifics of, uh, of how to do things. It's pretty awesome, right? The, uh, and these cheat sheets and handouts, everyone we've normally done has been between one, three, five pages max. Any more than that, uh, and it starts to get a little bit too much. Um, being ultra specific and to the point, uh, one of our biggest ones was like six pages, and that's because there was like 40 or sorry, 69 uh, headline examples in there, but a lot of the content was primarily just action steps on how to use them and what, to, and what situations to use them in. Number three is toolkit slash resource, resource list. A toolkit or a resource list can make a great lead magnet for the right business and market. Why? Because you can, let's say that you are in the internet marketing space and you are marketing an info product to struggling MLM or network marketer home business owners, right? You know their problems, you know their issues. You could develop a lead magnet that was like your top 13 resources for generating an endless flow of home business leads. And then when they open up your lead or your, your lead magnet, your PDF, your, your resource guide, your toolkit, 
you could have in the top 13 resources that you use, like maybe a, a landing page software, a traffic broker you use, you an affiliate product maybe of a Facebook pay-per-click thing, something where you're laying out the exact steps that if someone genuinely came through this and just followed your steps on how to do it, by going from A to B to C while you're laying it out, they could end up getting results in their business, and that person that ends up buying all of your affiliate tools listed inside of the PDF. Or what you could do, which would make more sense if you're selling, if you want to use this to recruit into a business or to sell your own product rather than affiliate products, you could list out the steps and the resources that you use, not giving links, leaving it kind of general. And then at the end, there was a straw call to action for them to jump on maybe a live or recorded webinar where you'd be selling your main product that would show them how to utilize everything they've just learned inside of the uh, the resource kit. It's making sense, right? You're following along. Number four is the video training. If it makes sense and you have the skill set, video can be very effective way to deliver your lead magnet. Now, let me say that again because some people who shouldn't be on video are on video. And I don't mean you just have to be on video where it's just you in front of the camera being all happy and bouncing around and, you know, I talk, it could be a video like this where you're basically just got have words on the screen or it could be a video where you're showing a cap, uh, a screen capture like I'm doing now. You're like a webinar, a hangout style where the person on the other side is just watching you do your thing on the, uh, on the computer. Uh, this is a this can be a very very powerful pre-frame a pre-sale uh, and we'll get into pre-selling a little bit more today uh, but basically with a video capture page your opt-in percentage could go down oh, that wasn't a good percentage saying your opt-in percentage could go down but the quality and lead that comes through is going to be dramatically higher because if a person sits through a minute video or a two minute video or a three minute video, they are way more qualified, they are way more pre-sold once they actually opt in after seeing your video, uh, as opposed to the person that just comes to the capture page of the lead magnet that just has a headline and then they, uh, they opt in. Now this also could mean a video training series on the inside, so you have your capture page and then once someone opts in, it's maybe a launch style funnel, which I'm sure you've seen before where there's three or four videos, a main video, and then uh, a button to get more information, where basically the hook is your three part or five part free video training course. The, again, be wary with this, that you don't draw it out for too many days and you don't draw out too much content in the video, because by the time your prospects gets to video three or four, they're thinking, oh my goodness, I need to know all of this stuff and I'm not even started yet. So you've kind of um, drilled too hard and they're, you're freaking them out. They're, their minds are blown open too much. Now there is a way when you do webinars, when you sell, this is just a side note, when you do webinars and you sell from webinars, there is a way to use that technique of blowing your prospect's mind so much with so much content and then you offer up the easier solution, right? The easy button um, <laughs> that Staples had when you open when you offer up that button because you're saying okay i've just trained for an hour or two hours and you've just learned all of these steps and all this stuff now go ahead and do it by yourself or for this simply one time easy payment i'll do it for you or i'll show you an in-depth way of doing it or we're doing it together by making their life easier that's just a side note uh number five types of lead magnets software download or free trial so i'm sure we've all been to uh, a page where you watch some content or read some content and then them said, hey, why don't you try our software, our tool, our training platform, our affiliate program for $7, uh, for $7 for seven days or even a dollar for seven days or even a dollar for 30 days like AWeber does where it's a dollar test drive for 30 days and then $19 a month after that. So that's a way that their lead magnet is taking a non threatening, low risk way for the prospect to get inside, to feel and see what it's all about for a low cost. Uh, number six, discount or free shipping. 
uh, we've never we've used discounts, but we've never used the free shipping offer. But we have seen guys like Russell Brunson, Dagan, uh, Ryan Levesque. I mean, the, Ryan Dice. The list goes on and on and on and on and on of Mark Frank Kern that crush it with free shipping. So basically, maybe they have a book or maybe they have a some sort of CD or a course. You come through to their lead magnet and it's saying, "Hey, just pay or um, just pay the shipping." And we will get you out whatever offer it is. And this this works a lot with uh, discount sellers and like wholesale sellers and things like that, where their lead magnet is if you go through this funnel, you'll get free shipping on any order that you place. Control C, that's what it is. And if you're wondering how I'm doing the uh, doodling on the screen, because this is really, really a powerful thing to do. It's a bamboo tablet that you can purchase online. And then I'm using a free tool for Mac called Omni Dazzle. And that allows me to draw on this tablet. And then let me just show you actually, because a lot of people always ask this and the, um, it's really, really powerful. So it's just, this is the bigger one. There's a smaller one they have too. But I found that I needed this one for my giant, big, sloppy handwriting, and then the um, the pen that goes along with it. So it's called a Wacom uh, bamboo tablet, and then there's different plugins and tools you can actually use to draw directly on the screen. With the bamboo tablet, they just give you software so you can draw within their application. But obviously, you want to be able to draw within everything, uh, and that application for Mac, which is free, is uh, this one right down here, the uh, Omni Dazzle. Number uh, seven, the quiz and survey. This is something that we've just gotten into and the results are freaking ridiculous. This is by far the highest converting lead to sale funnels we've ever put together is the survey a quick so uh, a quiz or a survey you don't actually in our internet affiliate marketing world you don't ever position it as as a survey because people are like bored of surveys but if you do a quiz then people absolutely love it so basically someone would uh they'd see maybe there was a banner ad or maybe a facebook ppc ad about uh finding out when their house was built or finding out if they're able to save money on taxis or finding out if they're under poor health or finding out if they're building their business the right way or whatever, you obviously just create the, the hook for whatever industry you're in. They come through to your landing page, which is actually just an image with a little button that says take the quiz or it's actually the first question. So it'll be a question with maybe two or three little answers. They click it another pot thing pops up another thing pops up and you can do this as much as two five six depending on the quality of traffic the temperature of the traffic and how many questions you offer them because then by the time let's just say you go for a nice whole number of three by the time that person's answered to three questions the only way they get the answer to their quiz is by putting in their name and email so how how qualified do you think that prospect is opposed to someone that just comes to your, your lead magnet, which is a headline and just opts in. Dramatically different mindset between that prospect and the prospect that comes through your, your survey, your quiz funnel. And if quizzes and surveys is something that you're really wanting to get into, side message me as we have some wicked tools that we use that allows you to build surveys and uh, quick quizzes and whatnot that are all behavioral um, process so meaning if someone answers a on the first page they see the corresponding page on the next one uh, so they the answers are different for everybody depending on what it is that they answer and there's some really cool training with that too I can definitely hook you up with that um, number eight is the assessment or test an assessment or test Particularly if you delivered online to increase the speed of consumption, gratification can make a powerful lead magnet. Uh, kind of the same mindset behind the survey and the quiz as opposed to the test. Uh, Neil Patel, he, he has an amazing one on his Kiss Matrix blog or 
tool, the software, where basically the initial, let me just see if I can bring it up real quick, the initial uh, lead magnet is So this is their their lead magnet. So you come straight to their home page and built to optimize marketing, track, analyze, and optimize your digital marketing performance. We show you what's working and what's not across all campaigns, mobile and web. So you can actually just put in your website and then test to see how your website is ranking for and how it's, uh, what does it look like compared to other sites? Is there things that you could be doing? So it's a really powerful way for you to simply get someone's email because what they're going to get is actual data on their um, their actual website. So you could set that up for your business no matter what industry you're in. You just model and adapt that same concept. So when someone opts in, they're actually getting a um, something that can benefit their business because you're testing uh, the speed of their site, you're testing how their social media presence is, you're testing their edge rank, testing lots of variables. Number nine, the blind slash sales material. In some cases, the most desired piece of information for the market is pricing and descriptions of products or service. This is not so much in our internet slash affiliate marketing world. This would be more financial trading. This would be more in a, uh, a service like um, um, like doctor supplies, like people that are paying a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand dollars for a piece of medical equipment or an airport hangar. Something to where it's not so much glamorized, but they're in an industry like that. There's not a lot of people putting together an actual book pricing out descriptions and products and services and giving comparisons and feedback. Uh, so again, if you want to learn more about something like that, uh, definitely check out this uh, this link here when, uh, when we're done with the webinar, which is uh, some of Ryan Dicey's best examples of, of lead magnets and whatnot. Okay, uh, Ned, Nettie wants to see the... Uh, tablet again so basically this is it bamboo by Wacom model CT8670 just google it bamboo tablet and then this is the pen and then you just use Omni Dazzle or any other free software that you can use with your uh, computer to um, I'm just reading Emily's comment, bro. Good morning from Australia. Uh, so let's keep rocking and roll. Uh, so the seven phases of a funnel or of funnel. Uh, I've got to give credit where credit's due. Stole this from Russell Brunson because I'd never heard this explained in such a clear way that anybody listening to it can easily and efficiently duplicate these methods. So there's a, according to Russell and his team, and when I went through this training, I was like, huh, that just makes perfect sense. It kind of breaks down everything that we teach online in one simple, clean image. So phase one is the traffic temperature. Is your traffic that you're going after hot, warm, or cold? So an idea for hot would be a Facebook PPC campaign where the level, remember we're talking about customer awareness, what their awareness level is. Their awareness level would be a one or a two. They're aware of the problem, they're aware of the solution, and they may even be aware of you. It's just you getting the right ad in front of them. So they click, and then they come to your pre-frame bridge. We'll talk more on that about that in a second. With this kind of traffic, sometimes you don't even need a pre-frame bridge. You can actually just go straight to the opt-in. Uh, but definitely, moving from warm to cold, you want to you want to be pre-framing uh, a warm traffic would be again maybe a ppc ad search ad or a banner ad 
to people that know the problem but really have no idea about who you are, the solution. They're just aware that there is a problem. Or uh, a warm lead could be someone that's already struggling in their home business and they're looking for more leads or their real estate business or someone who owns a restaurant and they're not getting the amount of people through the door that they want. Uh, this would be warm traffic. Uh, another description of hot and warm traffic would be if you've already got a subscriber list and you are sending an email to that list and it's you're sending it to your buyers, that would be hot traffic because they've already proven to you they're hyper responsive because they purchased something. So that's going to be, and you own the traffic, that's going to be the hottest traffic. Warm could be someone that's maybe not bought, but they're on your list. So they've been on your list for a week or a month or a year, but they still haven't purchased something. But because you own it and they know who you are, this is warm. And then moving into cold traffic, this could be someone in Facebook PPC that you're trying to bridge over. Uh, maybe you are a financial planner and your business, you're targeting like Warren Buffett, you're targeting people in the financial world, Donald Trump, and you're leading with a kind of generic uh, ad that hooks them in. Even though they're cut, they've clicked and came to your bridge pre-sale page, they're still cold traffic because they don't know the issue, they don't know how to solve it, and they don't know uh, who you are. So when you are generating traffic, some of the best ways for you to increase conversions, maybe not increase conversions from click to opt-in, but from click to sale, you'll increase your conversions by adding in pre-sales. So step number two is your pre-frame bridge. So a pre-frame bridge could be something as simple as this page. Let me show you. I think we kind of looked at it the other day. And under dog story. So this is a pre-frame, simple blog. This is a blog page with no template or, or bare template because there's no columns. It's just one column down the middle. And all it is is a story. My story about marketing, a couple of images, and then uh, a call to action for them to click the link or click the button and come to the next page and the next page is my capture page. So rather than sending that Facebook traffic for that specific audience to this right away, we're sending them to this pre-sale, pre-bridge uh, page and getting them, taking them basically from, uh, taking them from the level of cold or warm through to hot. And basically that's all you really want to do when you're talking about increasing conversions on the front end. You want to take this cold person and turn them into with your bridge page, then moving into the flow of hot target, hot temperature traffic. Uh, another way you could do that is a video. Like if you, um, there we go. if you are sending your Facebook traffic, through to a clean looking simple page like the one you had before with no banners, no columns, and it was just a value driven two to three minute video about who you are or the problems that that person's having or so a story about how you used to have the same problems and then and then you changed it. And then a button could pop up below a minute or two minutes in asking them to click it and when it does it brings up an opt-in form for them to opt in. Now, years ago, if we were to say we're going to have a capture page that when someone hit it, they actually had to click something first before even seeing how to opt in, that we would be crazy. We'd be like, what the hell? Why would we want to do that? Because when capture pages three, four, five years ago, uh, you could just throw up a capture page with a headline and a, an opt-in form and it still works today in some traffic and you got silly conversions because people weren't really used to seeing them. Now with the capture page syndrome, everybody sees them every second of the day, especially if you've been in internet marketing or researched internet marketing or seen online e-commerce e for any amount of time, you've seen that they are being so overused, people are getting immune to, 
to them, putting in fake email addresses just to receive the content on the next page, but not actually wanting to receive future con uh, communication from you. So how do we counteract that? We make it so the first page that someone sees, they have to click a button, the two-step opt-in, uh, in order to opt-in qualifying that traffic. It's basically a, a tiny little micro commitment from that person saying, putting their hand up and saying, yes, I want to see this. And then when they put in their, their name and their email or just their email and they hit submit, that's them saying, yes, again, I want to see this. When they come through and watch your video, if they stay to halfway or three quarters of the way or all the way through, that's them saying, yes, I want this. Uh, and then if they click the button to buy and come through and buy, basically what that person is telling you is yes, 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 I, ha I am interested in what it is that you have to offer basically. <clears throat> Let me take a drink of water, make sure there's no questions. If you have any questions, just put them in the thread here on Facebook or um, inside the webinar chat room. Let's just jump back to the webinar room real quick, see if we can. Pre-sale blog post, is that a private URL hosted on your blog? Uh, yeah, so you could just do a blog post uh, from your blog and make like I did, and then uh, it's just a private post, so it's a, a new page, so it's not always seen on your blog, it's just a new page. Is this a personal video or a scripted spoken PowerPoint type of bridge? Uh, really, it all depends on the market you're in, uh, Mike. It all depends what the message you're trying to convey is also, because sometimes a, a live video of the person's face works better. Sometimes the ugly video sales letter where it's just the white page with the black and red font works better. You just have to test to see the market. So, uh, moving on to stage three, what we kind of we kind of just spoke about it was the uh, qualifying the subscribers. So you're pre-framing them with your bridge. The people that make it from your bridge to your capture page are interested, and then people that actually opt in to whatever your squeeze page looks like, they are qualifying themselves to you, saying yes, I'm still interested. Many different ways you've got to test. There's I can't say to you this is the best capture page to use because I don't know your traffic, your message, your market. I, I, I don't know those variables. And even if I did, I still have separate pages up uh, testing. So here's my our formula whenever we create a sales funnel and specifically a capture page. We will decide our hook, our lead gen hook, right? Go and create it. And then we'll create three completely different looking capture pages. So let's say for an example, this first capture page is just a headline and an opt-in. The second capture page is a headline with a button that they have to click and then the opt-in comes up. And then this third one is a video and maybe we'll do a fourth one which is a survey. We'll run that for seven days or four days, depending how much traffic's coming into it, at least 100 visitors, but you want 1,000 visitors to test, and then see, okay, which one did best? This one sucked, okay, let's get rid of that one. That one sucked, okay, this one was okay, but this one won. So this style worked best for that traffic. So we have a winner, right? So now what we do is we take that one capture page and we go out and we create three variations from that. And maybe we change the headline in this one. We change the headline to something else in this one. We change the headline to something else in this one. Run it for the same 100 or 200 or 500 or 1,000 visitors. We find which one is best out of the three headlines. Once we've got our three headlines that we like the best, we then go out and we take that capture page and we use headline number, let's just say it was headline number one. So now we have that capture page with headline number one in the style that won the first time, and now we'll change maybe the image, or we'll change the video, or we'll change another um, variable of the capture page, go out, do three, and you can do that as many times as you want. If you're optimized, if you're always optimizing, you're always increasing in conversions. Mm -hmm. But with us, by the time we get to like maybe stage, three or stage four, 
or stage five in the optimizing, it's normally around 50 to 60% to 65% opt-in, right? So I'm happy with that. I'm going on to tweak something else. Layla just asked me if I could bring Beatrice's Bubba when I go back over. Of course, babe. <laughs> You're following along, getting excited, right? Seeing how you can utilize this in your own business. So that's our process for optimizing the capture page. So phase four of your uh, sales funnel is qualifying the buyers. Because remember, all you're doing is segment, you, all you're doing is segmenting, and then you are sifting through to find your most hyper people. Um, that's all you're doing. You're, you're doing that from your traffic, you're doing that from your pre-sale, you're doing it from your capture, and now stage four, you're doing it, uh, segmenting from your buyers. Segmenting, segmenting. I always get that word messed up and try and do it in two syllables. Segmenting. <laughs> now I've confused myself. <laughs> Put in the comments, tell me how it's supposed to be pronounced. Segmenting, there we go. It is segmenting, it is two, not segmenting. It's two syllables, right? See, it just proves that you can be an ad copy madman and an online seven figure earner and still not know how to pronounce words. Awesome. <laughs> Let's get into this. Do you smell bacon? So, qualifying your buyers. So once coming, someone's come through the four stages up until now, and now it's time for them to see your offer, basically all they're telling you is, yes, I'm ready to buy. So when the button comes out and they click it and they come through and give you money, they say yes. If they drop off and don't buy, they're not saying no. What are they saying? Not right now. They're saying, I haven't seen enough value. Because they want whatever it is that you have, or they want to solve the issue you're talking about because they've come through one stage, two stage, three stages, they sat through God knows how long of your video sales letter or, or your sales page or long form sales page. So they actually are genuinely very interested in what it is that you have, but maybe it was too pricey, maybe they didn't see enough value, maybe it wasn't worthy right for them, maybe you didn't push the right emotional buttons for them, so they've said no, not no. So all you've done is qualify your buyers. So now this person that says no, they get put into a list that says, um, they get put into a list that said, that's basically a, a three or a five or a seven email follow-up sequence, pointing them back to the sales page, speaking to, giving them more benefits, more reasons, pushing on their pain buttons even more, Directing them back to the sales page to come and um, to come and want more. Oops, let me take a screenshot of how ridiculous this page looks right now with all this doodling. You guys are following, right? You're starting to see how this stuff makes sense, how it impacts your business when you break it down. Good. Uh, stage five is identifying the hyperactive buyers. So basically, what you've done is through your uh, tripwire offer, your front end, or your profit, your core pro, uh, core profit maximizer, whatever the product they've bought, you're now going to go into an upsell sequence, which is kind of number six to the age and ascend in the relationship. But with this, you're talking more about getting on webinars and maybe conference calls and da, 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 da. We'll talk more about that in a second. But with this, you want to identify who your hyperactive buyers are who are your people that are going to buy everything because a buyer is a buyer and a buyer someone that comes through and buys your first thing are really likely to buy your second thing and buy your third thing and buy your fourth thing so if you don't have one-time offers if you don't have upsells inside of your funnel you are leaving money on the table most businesses don't make it when they try and come online because they're surface level thinkers they have maybe they get the capture page right Maybe they get a sales page, and then maybe they have a offer, and that's where they, that's where the, all their money is supposed to be made. When wrong, that's not even where money's made. That's where we just acquire buyers at a loss or maybe at recouping our cost, maybe making a tiny profit if we're lucky. But on the back end, with our higher level coaching, our higher level products, more of what we just offer them, whatever kind of upsell OTO you have in place, that's where you're going to make your money. And all you're doing is sifting through to find the ones that are hyperactive, that are hyper, 
will buy things and you just keep racking those up and keep racking those up into a separate list and then you're finding out what it is so let's say that this is person type one that buys this but doesn't buy your second upsell this is type two that buys this and your second upsell this is type person three that buys your first second and third thing you put this person into a separate list because hey they bought what you had they're a buyer but they're not hyper Let's put this person into a separate list. Hey, they bought what you had, but they're not super hyper. And then let's put this person into a third list where it's your super hire, most active buyer, which you then get on a conference call with to see if they want to hire you for consulting or coaching or something that's a big, big package. Making sense, right? Really, really powerful stuff, this. Phase number six is the agent of send relationship. So this is where you would, by doing a webinar, by doing a one-on-one -on -one with them, by doing a event maybe, uh, and this can take you know seven days, this can take a month, this can take a year, you want to bring that person up to phase seven and challenge, changing the selling environment, which is basically bringing them through to the value ladder. So you are, understanding that when someone comes in at your base level from your lead magnet and they buy your four dollar or seven dollar nineteen dollar tripwire intro level product the value is going to be good but it's not going to be as much as your high-end product so then it's your job to take them through a series of webinars uh, and then changing the selling environment by taking them out off the computer and on the phone or onto an event or watching a, 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 a listening to a CD or joining you on a hangout, some sort of different way rather than they're just watching a recorded video or your membership site that's doing the selling or your copy. You want to ascend them up the value ladder. and. This for a lot of companies that are doing this right will start out a seven dollar implementation course or a cheat sheet. It will maybe move up to one ninety seven. It'll move up to four ninety seven. It'll maybe move up to three thousand or five thousand, all the way up to twenty five thousand to maybe a hundred thousand dollar product. And how you do that? Obviously, the price increase, but the value is the most important thing, and the perceived value is the most important thing. So obviously, your seven level seven dollar entry level course is stacked with value because that's the uh, if you get this ass backwards and think well I'm just gonna give them less and less and less here and then just give them more up here that's wrong you want to over deliver tenfold on the beginning intro product so when that prospect is given the opportunity to think about going up the value ladder they're more inclined to do so because they've seen, wow, look at the training, look at the quality, look at the time spent on this. And this was only $7. Imagine what I get when I'm at $497 or $3,000. Imagine how much the value will be when I'm at that level, of course. As making sense to you guys, you guys are following along. Yeah, total sense. Alicia says, loving it. Uh, that's awesome. Awesome. Uh, Mike, uh, I've got screen flow rocking. Luckily, I didn't need Layla to uh, to remind me. Uh, video editing tools, to be honest, and for inside of our sales funnels, majority of the time it's the iPhone, <laughs> iPhone to your desktop or straight to YouTube, and then we'll use maybe iMovie, which is the software that comes with the Mac. There's there's not a lot we're doing. We're not like making it crazy video editing and doing all this fancy stuff. It's pointless. Uh, you don't need to. If you're talking, depending on what you're selling and what you're offering, right? If you're in a marketplace where you're dealing with hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars per transaction, they want things to look really professional. But even still, they want it to look real. They don't want it to just look, you know, uh, uh, they don't want it to look um, too fake and too overproduced and uh, a big production. Because at the end of the day, people love real life. We That's why we love reality TV shows. That's why we're all about knowing the celebrities gossip and what's going on in their life. So when your videos are very down to earth, when your videos are very low budget, low fi they convert well because people see you're a genuine human being. You're just like them. And that's at the end of the day, the common, uh, like the, the most surface level, but deep rooted emotional core 
thing is we want to be around people that we're like. So if they see that you, this person who's living this amazing lifestyle, who's generating such a great income and living this awesome lifestyle and helping so many people change lives, if they see you doing that and then say, well, they were just like me six months or a year or two years ago, wow, I could really do this. And when you do that through lo-fi videos and everything like that, uh, it really draws people in. Uh, Neri asks, if you entice an opt-in, a lead through for your lead magnet, which is a cheat sheet, they're now on your list. How many emails do you send before you introduce them to your affiliate product? Uh, there's many, many different ways of thinking of that. Some people would say, hold off for two days before they see the product. Some people would say, man, you're crazy for doing that because those two days they've just found someone else and went and bought. At the end of the day, you just have to find out what's right for you. But if you offer your product up, and position it in such a really valuable way that the only reason you're showing it to them is because it's solving their major issues, because it's solving their specific questions, then they're happy to check it out. If you just bombard them with email after email about pitch after pitch, you're gonna piss them off. But even if you're emailing them every day or every other day with a link to your product, but in the emails, it's wound into a story, it's wound into a, a value-driven story or uh, training, that person's still going to get value from it and still going to be inclined to open your emails. <laughs> you love this t-shirt? I bought it years ago when back in the uh, Vi days when we we're all so trim and working out and now I'm working out again. I know it's a cool little bunny ninja dude. <laughs> I digress. Uh, so yeah, awesome. Everybody's saying making sense. Loves iMovie. Love this stuff. It's awesome. Awesome. Good. So you're loving it. You're getting value. Great. So let's move on to the uh, the next part here, and that's talking about funnel hacking. So there's some really cool research tools that you can use for doing funnel hacking, and one of them is ClickBank. So the, on the webinar the other night, we went in and we kind of did this stuff, uh, kind of flying through it. Uh, and right now I want to really get into it and show you what you can what you can do here and exactly the process that we, we go through to do this. <laughs> I'm clicking that banner just because it's so ridiculous. See our crazy language live for and be baffled over normally high conversions. <laughs> Page is so ugly. Look at this uh, banner ad. It's so ugly, but it just drew me in because it's so ugly. There's a note. Whenever you do banner ads, make sure they're as ugly as can be. You want it to be the ugliest one on the page, for depending on what market you're in. But normally, the ugly ones, the eyesores that stick out, are the ones that people normally click. So let's just say that we are a restaurant owner and we decide that we want to generate more customers coming for our business, but we also want to generate this huge big audience of people that also love food and love dinner and love wine and whatnot, because we understand when we build that audience of that people, it will eventually lead to more buzz around our business, our restaurant. So we want to set up an online sales process to sell an affiliate product, but to make money on the front end, but more importantly, to generate this big audience of people. So I went into ClickBank, into the marketplace, and chose cooking, food, and wine. So let's just go to cooking. And four offers, fat burning kitchen, 101 eight, eight anti-aging foods, truth about tabs, the fat burning kitchen. Your 24-hour diet transformation to make your own body fat a fat-burning machine. So tons of amazing content on here, probably just digging into all kinds of, of uh, terrible things that we do as human beings to our bodies and we just thrash them and we're all going to die really soon because we don't own this $40 regular price uh, fat-burning kitchen. But wait if we get it in the next 15 minutes it's $30 off and it's just $10 just $10 you believe that just $10 75% off 15 minutes by now so this is a very well structured sales page I would buy it just because it's ten dollars. I didn't even read through any of the content but because in real time it chopped the price from 40 to ten dollars I would just buy it <laughs> 
<laughs> so to funnel hack this stuff, what I would do is I'd take that URL and I'd go to a website called Similar Similar Web. There's also another one that I would go to called Where Things Run. That's not that. What runs where? Now, the reason I'm showing you both of these, one of these, it, their beginning price is uh, 300 bucks a month. That's their begin. Oh, sorry, 200. No, 150 a month. Oh, no, it's only the, the mobile. So, 250 a month is their starting out um, package, their basic package. So. The, the reason I'm showing you similar web and this, this one's a paid one, but it shows you a lot more stuff on smaller sites. Where similar web for their free uh, tool shows you quite a lot of stuff, but if the, the website doesn't have a ton of traffic, like if the website isn't getting, if the website isn't getting 500,000 visitors a month or more, you're not getting a lot of the data. You're going to get quite a lot, but you're not going to get the stuff, the juicy bits that we really want. Where what runs where, you can put in any URL. Doesn't matter how much traffic they're getting, they will go in and show you where their ads run and blah 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 blah. So uh, if you guys are interested in getting the basic package, then we could look into maybe doing a little hack where maybe there's like five people all chip in fifty bucks a month. Or, or whatever and even though it says single user we'd have to see if we could get around that and we could hack it by all using that account but I don't know if we can do that we'll see so better I'll just start with similar web because it's free and you get a ton of awesome stuff if you're going after big name websites so what I do is I would come in here and I would check who are the um, who are the referring sites so I take a screenshot and list out these sites, right? Because I want to obviously go in and buy ads on this site once I have my funnel set up. I'll go in to uh, search and see, okay, what are their organic keywords? I need to take these organic keywords and I need to create content or have someone else create content uh, around these keywords pointing back to my funnel. Uh, I what So what I would do is I would, their main keyword truth about abs knowing that's their main keyword I'm gonna go ahead and google it I said truth about tabs when I read it the first time the truth about abs <laughs> so knowing that this is their highest uh, keyword and they have a, a video on there of three million views uh, pointing to their their site I would then go on and create video ads pointing that or that keyword pointing back to my sales funnel. Same with these paid keywords. I go in and take a list of these paid keywords, see what kind of stuff they're using, and then I would replicate and duplicate their campaigns in my business pointing to my sales funnel. Um, social, you can see it comes from Facebook. Uh, so we kind of know nearly every site online, the over 70% is from Facebook and then it's either Pinterest or YouTube or Instagram coming in second or third. The display advertising, this is where we really want to hone in. 30% of their monthly traffic is coming from display ads. So 1.6 million, uh, say 800,000, around 500,000 or so, 400,000 or so visitors a month are coming from these two, four, six, eight, ten 10 websites, but the majority come from natural news. So around 300,000 visitors a month is coming from this naturalnews.com. So what I would do, understanding that, I would come to that website, see what it's all about, scroll down, and advertise information. These websites are going to have different things that we can do. Like right here, it's telling us their, their banner dimensions that we can buy from them. It's also telling, uh, Natural News receives over 4 million unique user hits a month, 10 million page views, 
there are currently 30,000 unique articles and over 12,000 keyword specific pages. So this is ridiculous content. You can also send a, um, you can do a, a broadcast to their list or you could record a 60 second ad and have it on their podcast. And this is just one site. So think about guys, think about if you took the top 10 of these, right? Went, checked out the site, saw what they had to offer and then click this one, let, let me make sure my screen's still showing, click this one little button here, show the ads, and then you can mimic these entire ads, right? Just duplicate these entire ads, not stealing them, but modeling them. You knew exactly what site they were running on, and then just go and craft uh, your sales funnel the exact same way they've crafted this. Now, what's, what even takes this one step, step further is you can click this little button here that says see landing page and this is giving you the content that they are landing on so you don't have to just take sites from clickbank normally the top three in clickbank's um pop most popular are earning at least 50 60 70 thousand dollars a day some of them are doing quarter million dollars a day so you know they're very popular let's just say that you are a Top real estate trainers. Trainers. You're a real estate guy, girl, and you want to sell more of your courses on real estate. I would do a quick Google search. I'd find out who are the top influencers inside of that uh, space. A lot of Oh, this must be in Australia. Yeah, this is an Australian site. That's why there's a, so many Aussies. So but I'm not very familiar with the real estate game. I'm not in it. So let's just say, let, let's see if this site's popular. So I Googled it, right? Come back to my amazing tool of similar web. They got 140,000 visitors a month. 30%, uh, 37% search traffic they are not doing any not doing any display ads uh but that doesn't mean that we still can't tap into where the referral sites are so it's telling us where these referral sites are that we can duplicate um so basically i'd find the the top people in that space find their websites find what they're selling I'd go through, I'd buy their product or course or service, and then I'd come in and I'd find out exactly where they are uh, buying their traffic, where sending them their traffic, what kind of ads they're using. Now, if you, let's just say, for an example, you're an affiliate marketer and you want to sell some affiliate products, or you're a home business owner and you want to recruit people into your business, how would you use this strategy? Well, what I would do is I would go to, Let's type in one of the, the billion dollar companies of network marketing, Amway. I've put it in similar web. Let's do Amway.com. 1.8 million visitors a month. Are they doing display advertising? Yes. So their top publishers driving around 100,000 to 180,000 visitors a month. Do you think your business would do better with 180,000 visitors a month? I think you would. You can just go in here, use, you can actually just use Google's network, right? And just use that. Um, click the, to see the ads and then see what kind of ads work best. Go in and, and see the landing page of where, where they're uh, where they're sending them and just replicate this process and do it do it for companies do it for uh, brands like who who are the uh, so network pro that's one of the best and most popular sites shout out to Eric Worry and what he does he's an awesome dude come in here find out 600,000 visitors a month. Is he doing display advertising? No. Who's his bigger referrals? And then go in and see who gives this person the most traffic. Can we advertise on their, uh, on their site? You guys follow along with that stuff? It's pretty ridiculous, right? Brilliant. 
amazing. I love it. I'm just reading some of the comments. I love it. This stuff's mind blowing. Awesome. So the, um, what's so powerful about having a good online sales process and it can be a three page funnel, a two page funnel, a 10 page funnel. It really all just matters on who your target audience is, how big the problem are and how much is the product you're actually selling. Now the, the most, the most powerful thing about this is when someone comes from your Facebook ad, they click on the ad because they're intrigued with whatever problem you're solving for them. They come to your break, your pre-sale page or your capture page and they opt in. And then by the time they get to your sales page, and that's the simplest funnel, right? Well, even more simple would just be going straight to a sales page, but you want to capture the lead. So you're sending them to the capture page. Second page they've seen is the sales page. So they've only gone through two pages, but they click the ad, so it's kind of a three-step funnel. That can take you minutes. To, to go through, right? Someone could go from being on Facebook to seeing your offer in minutes. It may take you a couple of hours or a couple of days to write the content for the capture page and the sales page, but it takes that person a minute to go from Facebook to seeing your offer. So let's say the power in this is you're able to take that person from just clicking your your ad, your image, your video, whatever, through to seeing your offer and you're getting them to say yes and say yes. Yes, they clicked your capture page or they clicked your link, they clicked your ad, yes, I'm interested in what you have. They came to your capture page, they saw what you had to offer, they said yes, I'm interested in what you had to offer. Now that they're going through to your sales page, when you're doing your sales video, you're gonna be asking what's called trial closes all the way through your training, asking them, yeah, you're getting this, right? You're feeling really excited. Don't you just love that? Isn't it great? And by and you'll notice I use these on the entire training and what I'm getting you to do is say yes. Even if you don't verbally say it out loud, yes, you are actually saying yes on a uh, subconscious level to the questions that I am asking. The power of the sales funnel is you're able to efficiently solve your target audience's issues and make money in a process that's automatic, that's on autopilot. When you have a sales funnel that you go from capture page to bridge page to sales page to checkout page to membership site, and you can string those all the way through, all done on autopilot, your business is making you money. People are signing up for your business. People are giving you money in the middle of the night while you sleep. Um, it's just fucking ridiculous. I had to swear. It's just ridiculous when you set this up right. So, some of the other tools uh, that we use to gather uh, research on sales funnels would be Alexa.com. Alexa. All these sites have free version and paid versions. Uh, obviously, you get more benefits when you get um, paid versions. So Network Marketing Pro, I can find out uh, the best keywords for that. I can find out the top. Uh, referring sites, I can find out the top links linking in. And basically all this is doing when you do this stuff is you're finding out more and more and more about your target audience and you're finding out more and more and more about who your competitors are and what they do. Because all you need to do, you don't have to reinvent the wheel, all you need to do is find someone that's already crushing it inside of whatever market you're in and go and replicate that, duplicate it, model it, and uh, you're gonna get results. Uh, so Alexa, another one that we use is called Quantcast. And these tools are used for market research, knowing your audience, and then also utilizing for your sales funnel also. Nothing came out for Quantcast. There we go. So again, you can come in and you can view data, you can view information, you can view. That's mama messaging me when I'm going to be done. So uh, these websites, get into them. Uh, they're pretty self-explanatory. It's just about you going there and finding the data and writing the data down and analyzing the data. Uh, research tools for sales funnel to reverse engineer stuff is YouTube. 
YouTube's the second biggest search engine online, right? So if we know that, why not utilize it? So let's go in and type in, um, like let's just even continue with the thread of, of Network Marketing Pro. Go in and see who is listing for these keywords. Or let's say you could say buy a house in Ontario. So I've just put in buy a home or buy a house in Ontario. And then let's go see this guy. He's got 3,600 views. He doesn't even have a link in here, which is crazy. <laughs> so he could he could be funneling us back to his website. Even if he doesn't have something to sell, uh, he could still have a lead magnet in place. You're seeing that, right? He could have a lead magnet in place. Uh, that when we have that lead magnet, we're then on their list, and they they know that we are interested in buying a home at some point. So why wouldn't we want to be on their list? This person is doing it the right way. They got a video. They have uh, a process. Download the mortgage loan options guide. So that's kind of their lead magnet, right? This ugly button right here, where or subscribe to the blog. Like this is crap. They, they sh you could genuinely take what you learn in this course. I'm telling you to do this. Go out and take what you learn in this course and go to companies like this and tell them, hey, look, if you just simply put in, rather than this button right here, that. You could even just change the color to this button and have an arrow pointing here. And when someone clicked that button, it would bring up the two-step opt-in and it would increase their conversions. Tell them to fancy up their opt-in and just not call it the mortgage loan options guide. Like, that's so boring. Tell them to make it sexier, maybe take, touch on some pain things. Um, and the... the you know, they have these essential buyer's guide for first homes. Well, yeah, but I want to know more. You can genuinely take what you learn in this course and go and just attack any industry that you want and, and profit from showing people how to do it better. So YouTube's a really good way for you to reverse engineer stuff. Uh, you can use, uh, obviously, Facebook. So coming to Facebook and going through your news feed and clicking on ads of not just things in our industry but clicking things that are outside of our industry because that's when you really grow as a marketer. You will grow as a marketer when you're going through uh, and finding different markets, different channels that's not even related to your current business or what you're doing but you're able to find out how people are selling. You're able to see, okay, how do these people go through the sales process? Uh, here's Instapage, a very big company that do build, building land, landing pages and whatnot. They're just bringing us straight to this page, create awesome landing pages in just three minutes, get started. So they, this is the most simplest, genius way of a lead magnet ever. On their uh, Facebook ads, landing pages improve conversions by over 35%. Do better advertising. So a very simple, generic ad speaking to business owners, telling them that they can increase the conversions by 35%. They bring me through to a very, very uh, slick, clean, not a lot of clutter, not a lot of options. My eyes only go to this green button, and it's addressing my initial problem in two lines create awesome landing pages in just three minutes because anybody that's been trying to create landing pages or sales funnels before know it can be a pain in the ass you have to hire people it just becomes an absolute freaking nightmare but with this it's addressing our major issue right away in three minutes get started and it brings up the, the two-step opt-in form Pretty amazing stuff, right? Uh, some of the tools that we use every day, we used to use lead pages. That was what we built all of our sales funnel on. If you want our affiliate link for that, go to tobyandlayla.leadpages.net. Uh, I'll have a, a little description in the image for this training. We'll give you all of the links that we use. But one that we have just started using is ClickFunnels, and it's it's freaking ridiculous because with ClickFunnels, uh, not only are you able, and we have an affiliate link for that, of course, if you decide that you want to buy that from us, it'll be much obliged. Uh, with ClickFunnels, it is drag and drop, which is awesome. 
it is it doesn't just do pages it actually does complete sales funnels and it actually does membership sites to check out so basically uh, this is the kind of funnels you can do at a click of a button so let's say that you really just thought of an idea for a lead gen offer going into your affiliate marketing network marketing or you already had a sales page for your other business you could literally in minutes create your capture page create a pre-sale page or a thank you page and then go to your offer and it's all drag and drop and click. You can do a three part uh, and they have templates of funnels. So they have a template of uh, a lead generation funnel. They have a template for so many different things where it includes maybe two pages or five pages or four pages pre-made, pre-done for you. Uh, which has been blowing my mind for the past couple of weeks. And the one thing that I really like about this is uh, you can actually do the automated webinars so it looks like live. So basically someone comes to the capture page to see a like live webinar. Uh, they come through to the thank you page telling them to save the date and then whatever date a link goes to their email, whatever day you set your webinar for, they come back, they get logged in and it looks like it's live. They have uh, sales funnels where it takes you through from capture page to pre-sale to sales page to checkout to confirmation page and then straight into the membership site. Anybody that's ever done anything like that before knows this was normally a three tool. So you had to use three separate tools to accomplish this. You normally had to use something like lead pages and then something maybe like Nanocast or Optimized Press and then using WordPress or Wishlist or some sort of plugin. Now it's all done under one roof. So really impressed with this. I'm like genuinely flat out floored at the stuff they've been doing uh, inside ClickFunnels. So definitely a tool that we would recommend you guys to, to get into and start utilizing because really, really powerful stuff. Uh, the other tools that we use for list uh, when you want to segment your list is get response or if you've already got a web or like we had uh, we'd had for years we never knew about a tool called AW Pro Tools until maybe a year ago where basically this tool AW Pro I don't know if that's our affiliate link. Uh, basically, this tool is freaking amazing. What it basically does, it allows you to have the power of like an infusion soft. Now, this is a bit more advanced, but it's something that you definitely want to think about incorporating into your business now. So when you have 10,000, 100,000, uh, 500,000 visitors and, and leads going through your funnel, all of this stuff is already in place and you're not doing it like we did it. We had already had like 12, 13,000 people on our list when we learned about segmenting our list and putting this into effect. But basically, in a nutshell, what this does with other more robust follow-up systems like Infusionsoft and things like that, you're able to do behavioral stuff. So if someone opens up your email, when they click to open up your email, they're moved from one list to another list, and then another set of follow-ups happen. Uh, you can copy them to that list so they stay on both. You can do something called tagging. So let's say you're sending out to your main list uh, an email about copy about how to write copy and a bunch of people click the link and open it you can now tag that specific person with an interest of copy so next time that you have something to talk about that does with copy you're only emailing the people that actually like it and that's basically what you're doing in a nutshell you're taking your huge list which everybody goes into finding out what things they are most excited in by raising their hand and saying yes and then putting them into different buckets of interests, of, of gender, of, of hyperness, of whether they're a buyer or not. And uh, this is something that's an ongoing process. Don't think you just do it and that's you knowing what to do. It takes a while. It's a more advanced technique, uh, but it's definitely something you want to do because then you can basically have these little pockets of interests of people in your list. So when you have an offer, an affiliate offer, a new product to sell, you're not just blasting it to everyone, you're actually going in and talking to that specific pocket of person who really likes your stuff. Uh, if anybody wants more advanced training on, on list segmenting, and see there it is again, list segmenting, there we go. If anybody wants any more advanced training on that, reach out to us. We have some definitely some stuff we can share with you. So to recap today,
Today was all about funnel hacking. Today was all about putting together a sales process so when you start your Facebook ads, you can genuinely win. You can genuinely recoup costs. You can genuinely be able to sustain it and scale it up. So moving out of here, what do you want to do? Well, if you already have a sales funnel in place, I don't want you to go out there right now and try and build a whole new sales funnel. There's no point. Just go in and optimize it. Go in and say to yourself, am I speaking directly to my target audience? in my sales funnel? Am I using their language? Am I talking about the pain points that they have? Do I have a pre-sale bridge page? Am I qualifying my traffic from hot to warm to cold? Am I doing the thing? So what I want you to do is uh, watch this recording again and then go in and implement it. Now, if you don't have a sales funnel at all, you can click the links below this recording right now. If you're watching it live, we'll, we'll send them to you. If you're watching the recording, go ahead and click ClickFunnels affiliate link, go and buy ClickFunnels, and then go in and create your own sales funnel. The training in there will show you exactly what to do and how to set it up. But right now, I'm telling you, if you already have a sales funnel in place, don't go out and create a whole brand new one. Don't let, waste time doing that implement what you've just learned here to optimize and tweak the one that you already have. If you don't have a sales funnel, go in and create your whole new one with uh, or using everything that you've learned in session one about audiences and writing about their pains and the awareness of your customer and then what you've learned here today to structure your sales funnel in a way that people are actually going to buy from you. Hey Toby, was wondering if you consider setting up a week for a little thing. Yeah, Emily, that's definitely we can uh, talk about uh, through the Facebook group. Uh, that's a good suggestion. We'll see um, how that would work out. Uh, Sherry says all of this is so powerful. You don't have to have a marketing or advertising team. No, you just you scale once you you get up there very powerful brilliant specificity is key loving it loving it okay guys love you guys very much this recording will be up inside of the uh, private Facebook group right away if you're watching this inside of the mass audience conversion back office congratulations we love you very much now you know what to do you have to watch this again implement and optimize your sales funnel if you have one if you don't have one it's time to go out and create it by getting click funnels have an amazing day love you guys take care